on reshoring, building the global supply chain of tomorrow with Harry Moser and Congressman John Faso. And they will be hosted by someone you know very well, our longtime former deputy chairman, the Honorable Tony Clement. Tony, I turn further introductions and the rest of the proceedings over to you. Uh, thank you, Stephen, and uh, thank you, IDU, for the opportunity to have this session. And I would also like to thank our sponsor, Wellington DuPont Public Affairs, for the opportunity to have this session as well. You can find them at wellingtondupont.com. I want to do, as by way of introduction, a little bit of a, a, a set setting of the table, uh, and that would start pre-pandemic, because even before the pandemic, the increasingly aggressive activity of China and the CCP, uh, including the Belt and Road uh, Initiative, was giving rise to concerns about the global supply chain. Uh, once COVID hit, we had a mad scramble for PPE and the belated realization about the supply chain's connection uh, to public health and to national security. What's more, in areas like critical minerals, China's 70% chokehold on supply has implications for green energy, national defense, and much more. So it is time to build the global supply chain of tomorrow. Joining me to discuss this topic are two American experts. We have uh, John Faso. He is a former Republican congressman for New York's 19th Congressional District and is now a senior advisor to Wellington DuPont Public Affairs. And we also have Harry Moser, who served for 25 years at the helm of Aji Charmi, which is a machine manufacturing company. And then Harry subsequently founded the Reshoring Initiative to help bring manufacturing jobs back to the USA. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Harry, Thank you. I wanna to go to you first uh, and uh, maybe to give our audience who may not be familiar with the term reshoring. Can you describe reshoring for us? Uh, uh, reshoring is producing or sourcing in the country product that previously was sourced offshore, uh, replacing imports with domestically manufactured products. Uh, much of the decision is made by the OEM, by the big company, but most of the production is often done by the SMEs, the small to medium-sized companies, the, the equivalent of the German Mittelstand. Uh, in general, work is reshored for the purpose of supplying the domestic market and maybe neighboring countries. Exporting of the reshored products might happen, but that's not the, generally the intent. Uh, most broadly, reshoring means meeting domestic market demand via local production instead of offshore production. So the domestically produced product could be produced in-house in the factory of the branded product company, or it could be outsourced to that SME. It could be a next generation product that was never made offshore, so it doesn't have to be the same thing brought back. It could even be a domestic factory taking share previously filled by imports by another company domestic or foreign. So it's really a market consideration rather than a company consideration per se. Uh, before we go to John, maybe just uh, uh, give us a, a sense of how this idea came about to uh, Harry and, and how strong the trend is right now. Yeah, there has been reshoring and offshoring, the opposite trend going on forever, essentially. Uh, Alexander Hamilton was famous for insisting that the U.S. develop its manufacturing capability and become self-sufficient. So he was reshoring at that time. Uh, in the U.S. from, say, 1980 to 2015, there was a huge growth in offshoring. And as a result, we wound up with a consistent $800 billion per year goods trade deficit. Reshoring started going faster around 2010. Uh, we had brought back about 6,000 manufacturing jobs in the year 2010, and that grew to 190,000 just in the year 2017, driven significantly by President Trump's reductions in corporate taxes and regulations, generally a more business-friendly environment. And then it fell off, unfortunately, in 2018 and 2019, influenced by the you know, trade wars, which created business uncertainties. Companies didn't know when the tariffs were gonna end, Therefore, they stopped and said, we'll wait and see how that plays, plays out. Um, the 
Uh, reshoring now has picked up in 2020, driven significantly by COVID. About 60, that's 60 percent of the cases since March of 2020 have mentioned COVID as one of the driving factors in causing them to reshore. Uh, there are also significant reshoring efforts underway in the UK. They have a, an office and a, a, quite a good group doing that. And I believe Australia has done some work on this and we get periodic contacts from countries around the world all wanting to know how to, how to reshore, how can we do it? And we're, we're happy to help. Uh, John Fassel from uh, your uh, vantage uh, in the US Congress before and now in uh, business, what's your, what's your sense of uh, reshoring in this context today? Well, I think picking up on what Harry just said, uh, and first, thank you to the IDU for this uh, great opportunity to uh, come before you today. Um, what Harry just said in terms of COVID, uh, it has reawakened, it has awakened a, a uh, desire uh, of many Americans uh, to recognize that we are critically dependent upon uh, China and other nations around the world for uh, supplies of um, important minerals and critical uh, medical equipment, et cetera. And this has really come to roost really in the COVID uh, crisis when you had uh, multiple US states uh, all competing with each other to secure personal protective equipment, face masks, gowns, et cetera, gloves, uh, that simply adequate domestic supplies could not be found. And um, it has really now awakened Americans and I think uh, Congress on a bipartisan basis uh, to look at the critical dependence that we have uh, on, on China and other actors around the world for um, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients, for instance, which are critical to the manufacture of generic drugs, which you know, vast numbers of American consumers um, receive and take uh, generic drugs every day. Um, we are very dependent upon a China and places like India for uh, those pharmaceutical products. It's, it's kind of shocking when you think the last American pharmaceutical company uh, domestically that produced penicillin closed in 2004. And then when you look at issues like uh, uh, renewable energy uh, and uh, you see that we are dependent upon Chinese supplies for critical components uh, that are necessary for renewable energy. In fact, the Trump administration um, issued an executive order uh, last year uh, that talked about uh, 35 critical minerals that are necessary ingredients uh, for not just renewable energy, but for national defense uh, considerations, as well as a host of consumer products and so many Americans now are becoming cognizant of our dependence upon China, and it's an unhealthy dependence upon China. We saw back in 2010 when uh, China had a dispute, an unrelated dispute with Japan, and they cut off supplies of uh, critical uh, uh, minerals. And so uh, we've seen the willingness of China and the, and the Chinese Communist Party to use this leverage that they have obtained over the last uh, 10 to 15 years and to use it to try to bring about and effectuate their political agenda, their defense agenda, their economic agenda. They have a very mercantilist approach uh, to international trade. It's not a beneficent trading partner. And I, I think that one of the things that has really benefited the United States, for instance, has been the advent of hydraulic fracturing, which has developed tremendous natural gas resources. The United States is now the largest producer of oil and natural gas in the world. We're now exporting uh, natural gas and petroleum products. And uh, that in large part has made the United States because we are a low cost energy producer. It also helped us in terms of this reshoring argument because it has brought some manufacturing uh, back to the United States that previously was going abroad, but it, it, it's gonna be, this is, is not something that's solved uh, automatically overnight. It's not a magic wand type of situation. It's gonna require concerted effort on the part of, of government and industry 